it's a change that is really recognized at the time of injury that there's a change in neurologic function. And, uh, and that is without loss of consciousness. But I think if you move back even more, there are changes in neurologic function that no one would recognize unless they were tested. So the ability to actually test the person is one of the limiting factors. So in these subconcussive events, um, I would think, and this is a hypothesis, that one could study those folks and see that there is a change over time. And, uh, and maybe some of the other folks have, uh, would uh, comment on hey, that. There have been you, studies in college football players. Dr. Sifu, you want to comment on that? Yeah, I, I have nothing but ult uh, the ultimate respect for everybody on the panel. But I mean, there are some of us who, who have taken care of concussions for 25 years, whatever. I've taken care of 20,000 people with brain injury. I provide the care for an NHL team in concussions. And the sky is not falling. You should return to activity as within a day or two of a concussion, not contact sports. Should being in a dark room, resting, staying at home is not the treatment for injury in any level, including concussions. I've had six in my life. I was a terrible athlete, all right, um, and wasn't stopped. But, but, but I think it's important. There, there really isn't science that supports people shouldn't play sports after a concussion. And it really is bad for our youth. It's bad for our professional athletes. It's bad for everyone involved to, to spread that belief. We need way more re research, and I'm involved with all of these folks in a lot of research, but really there's no science that says don't play sports after a concussion. But what, what and, about a series and, of con concussions? Well, Can well, you talk about sure, that? Sure, sure. You get one concussion. It, first of all, it needs to be identified. It's extremely easy to identify an acute concussion that just occurred. Anybody in this room can do it, can be taught to do it quickly. It's very hard to use a survey to, pro to assess it even a week or two afterwards. It's not that challenging, but, but months afterwards, just about impossible. I run TBI care for the VA system and help set that up and I'm doing the research in the VA for that. It's really hard to do after the fact. So you have one, it's assessed, you, you, you make the diagnosis, that person gets back to activity a day or two, all right? Doesn't, doesn't play sports, but gets back to activity, gets back to school. They're at risk to get another concussion for the first several weeks, months, years even, but we're all at risk to fall down and to be in front of a bus. You're at much higher risk to get fat, to get heart disease, to get psychological problems if you don't go back to the... To but you know, activity. Tim, I got to... I mean, I just want it from my own experience. I mean, she was hit in the face. Yeah. She was told not to go to school know, for the next wrong. six weeks. It's wrong. She, she only reason she graduated was because, you know, they, they let her do things after and even yeah, in the... She should have been activated quicker and, and you're... I was you're, definitely told not to do I any know contact sports no. again and if I it know. happened a second time... I know. She would be... And we need to uh, stop that. That's not... So let me yeah. ask this among all the, all the experts here. I mean, how many of you think that after we've had a, a person's had an initial up. concussion, whatever its causes, that they should return to activity fairly quickly? Is there anyone who... After a single concussion? What about multiples? And multiples. I know, uh, Dr. Collins, I've been to your clinic, and 